there's never been a period of time where there's been more uncertainty, right? There's so many different things going on. So today, today's topic, today's money topic we want to hit is economic predictions for the next 12 months. What's going down? What do we think is going to occur? And most importantly, how can we still win? But let's talk about the next 12 months and what is likely or what may happen in the economy over the next 12 months. So as as we look at what's happened over the last, you know, let's call it 2021, 2022, and now 2023, I mean, is rapidly coming to an end. So as we look at the last three years, there was unprecedented government spending that took place in 2020, in 2021 with the pandemic. You had the CARES Act, you had all of these different, uh, there was a, there was a child tax credit program going on. Families were just getting uh, checks in the mail or deposited their bank account from the government with these bills that they passed. And so there was excess money, and then you had slowdowns, you had shutdowns, and that uh, increased demand when things started to open up again in 2021. And as such, that all led to a lot of inflation that they didn't think was going to happen. It was going to be transitory and temporary. And by the end of 2022, we realized as a country, no, it's not transitory. It's here to stay. And that inflation really geared up in a lot of places. So now this last month, really in just the last week or two, we saw that inflation numbers started to go back up. They started to tick back up again, and you're seeing gas prices high. You're seeing a lot of different things being affected by the high interest rates. And so if inflation continues to rear its ugly head over the next few weeks, few months, uh, over the next reports that come in every four to six weeks with our economic data then that's going to mean higher inflation is going to mean higher interest rates. Right now, the average mortgage interest rate is somewhere around seven and a quarter, seven point three percent on a thirty-year fixed. That's a very high interest rate compared to the three percent range that we were paying in early twenty twenty-two uh, when I last uh, refinanced and, and purchased, you know, a few uh, properties. And so that higher rate from three to seven and a half, seven point two five. I mean, it's an increase of 50, 60, 70% of your mortgage payment, that's substantial if you're looking to buy a property. And so we've also seen that that mortgage applications have hit their lowest uh, rate, lowest uh, number going back to 1996. We're talking 27 years was the last time mortgage applications were this low. And so with all of that high inflation, if it starts to tick back up, then that means Jerome Powell, the Fed leader, maybe the most powerful man in the country over the last two, three years, he's going to be concerned and he is not going to lower interest rates. He may even raise them even a little bit more to try to cool things off and bring that inflation number down, right? So high inflation means high interest rates. And so what do high interest rates? All of these things are, are cause-effect relationships, right? One thing happens, and then another thing follows it, and another thing is a consequence that follows that. So we have high inflation, interest rates go up. Well, the next thing that happens, and we've seen this already, uh, mortgage applications go down. And so that means people are less likely to buy real estate. They're less likely to buy homes. Right now, we still have a lack of inventory. There isn't a lot of homes and apartments available. So there's building going on right now, and that's keeping home prices high, which is dropping demand further. It's also keeping rents. Rents have gone down a little in some areas, but they're still staying high as well. And so high interest rates, what industries does that affect? Well, everything real estate related is taking a massive hit, right? We, we went and visited uh, you know, a few months ago a mortgage office that had 200 loan officers during 2020 and 2021 really growing. They signed a big lease, big office, and they were they're down to like 5 10%. They, they had 15 to 20 loan officers now instead of 200, and their office was very, op- very open, very empty, and they were trying to f- sublease out that big office space that they signed a lease for. And so real estate, mortgages, finance companies, construction companies, 
auto dealerships are really struggling, right? You try to buy a car and you look at your car payment at 3 4% interest, and then you go look at a, an interest rate of 8 9%, which is where car interest rates are at right now, and boy, that car is very expensive. And you start thinking, ah, maybe I'll keep driving my current uh, 5, 8, 10-year-old car a few years longer because I can do some repairs and keep on driving that car. Maybe I've even got it paid off. Maybe I don't want to take on an $800. I think the average car loan payment now has jumped up to over $700 in this country. And so auto dealerships, if you're you know involved in anything in auto dealerships, you're seeing a real slowdown there. Big purchases that need financing in solar, in any type of equipment, if you're a business owner, is much more expensive. And so what all this will lead to is more and more industry slowing down, which is going to lead to less profitable companies within those industries. And eventually you're going to see these less profitable companies are going to eventually going to have to cut more employees. And maybe you start to see job losses that actually Uh, exceed job uh, increases. Right now, job increases have slowed down substantially uh, to pre-pandemic levels. And so eventually, uh, you may see the unemployment rates start to tick up higher. Uh, Job losses may start to exceed job uh, openings and actual new jobs being created on a month-to-month basis. And so this is likely to lead to a more official recession in 2024. In 2022, we had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, and but we didn't really have the job losses. We didn't have the typical recessionary things happen where unemployment ticked up and job losses uh, increased. And we may not see that a lot anyway because there's so many job openings and just not enough people looking for new jobs. And you have more baby boomers than actual new Gen Zers coming into the job market right now. And so that may be a phenomenon that continues. Either way, it seems very likely that we may see more of an economic slowdown, maybe an official recession that has a tick up of unemployment and also job losses. And so if that happens, then you'll see things overall slow down in 2024. Maybe we end up seeing a change also in uh Uh, In the Congress, the House of Representatives, Senate, the president, maybe there's some changes that happen there based on what happens to the economy in 2024. But it certainly seems, following a lot of different economic uh, professionals and those who have been pretty accurate, you saw Michael uh, Burry, who was uh, the big short guy played by Christian Bale, great film if you haven't seen that one, and he recently Uh, was making a really bold prediction of several hundred million dollars that he was investing that was betting on the stock market going down, meaning a likely recession. So a lot of different things. Now, could all this not happen and the economy continue to, you know, move forward? Absolutely. That's always possible. But if I think a lot of the odds are starting to stack up and you start to see these high interest rates are going to start to take their toll. 2024 likely to see a slowdown, which then eventually leads to maybe lower interest rates in 2025 and 2026. The Fed starts to pull those rates down as job losses increase and the economy slows down. And then you start to see a slow recovery maybe in 2025 and 2026. Now, I could be dead wrong. So keep that in mind, but that seems like a very likely scenario taking place over the next 12 to 15 months. So all that said, looking and now transitioning from our money topic of what may happen over the next 12 to 15 months in the economy and how that's going to impact you, well, how do you ensure that you win over the next 12 months, no matter what happens in the economy? And that's what we all care about. And you know, it's interesting. Maybe, maybe, you know, you're doing fine. And maybe over the last five, six, 10 years, you know, you had your own personal recession, even though the economy was as a whole was growing and doing well. I had my own personal recession in 2018 when I left my previous company, brought on partners who didn't share my values and principles. I had to leave that company with over $100,000 in debt and fell behind on my mortgage for a few months. It was a very, you know, kind of scary time, but I had been there before and I turned all my focus to generating income 
right? I had, uh, you know, people I was working with, oh, you need to invest in this in your business, invest in that. I'm like, no, bro, you know what I need to do? I need to generate sales. I need to put all my focus on generating sales and income because if I have income coming in, I can pay my expenses, then I can make those investments. And most new business owners make this mistake. And I've shared this story before, but I love it. The founder of Samuel Adams, the beer brewing company in New England, uh, you know, when he was first getting started, his uncle, who was a Wall Street guy, invested $80,000 into his company. He gives him a call. And he's like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, oh, you know, I'm going shopping for computers and file folders and cabinets and all this stuff that was not going to actually earn the business money that he didn't actually need to be investing in or worrying about that point. And he said, what are your sales? And the founder of Sam I was like, I don't have any sales yet. And he's like, well, get your ass out of that office now. Don't go buy anything. And go knock on some bar, bars and restaurants doors and get them to start offering Samuel Adams as one of their, you know, beer craft solutions. And so he went out, started to focus on sales. The rest is history. And most business owners make this mistake during recessions, during slowdowns. And so what you want to do is you want to go even harder during recessions. A lot of people will pull back. You want to make sure that you're investing in improving your skills, right? Now is the time to invest in learning more marketing skills, more sales skills. If you haven't bought the book, $100 million offers, $100 million leads from Alex Hormozzi, you need to, you know, make these investments and go invest in courses. You need to get around more successful business owners and mentors than yourself. And and more than ever, you need to become that expert. You need to learn new skills. And you need to take a look at some of your systems and processes. I'm getting some alerts today that, you know, we need to make some adjustments with some of uh, our partners who are having struggles, issues, and things that we need to fix on our end. And if you don't have your finger on the pulse of your business and make those changes, you'll get into trouble. And so I'm starting to realize, well, I better make some changes and I better make them right now or we're going to start to feel the effects of, you know, issues with our process or with strategic partners that send us business. And so those are things that I've got to make adjustments to. What are the things in your business that you need to be making adjustments to right now so that you finish 2023 with momentum, go into 2024, and regardless of what's happening with the economy, with politics, you're creating a bull market and a successful growing business no matter what. And so it starts with investing in new skills, and lead gen will continue to be more important than ever, making sure your product and service is substantially better than the competition out there. That will continue to be very important for sure. And as a business owner, you need to be looking for new solutions. What are some new ways to serve your clients and customers, especially ways that generate recurring revenue? What, ser what service or product can you offer your clients and customers that will lead to them paying for it every single month? Recession-proof businesses are often recurring revenue businesses where you have recurring revenue products. For us, we're making a big investment, a big uh, bet on our app, the MyFigures.com Money Manager app, so that more small business owners can get on top of their finances, be profitable, be cash flow positive, get automated funding options, save money on, on lower interest rates, manage their credit, and be able to pay all their bills in one place and really succeed financially as a business owner. And that's going to create recurring revenue streams in our business, and it's going to really take our industry by storm, by surprise, and we're making changes in our funding process right now. Instead of having a funding advisor and funding manager where the process was slower, now we're making that into a hybrid position where everybody's a funding advisor. We can get term loans processed immediately on that first phone call, move people forward quicker get them funded faster, and make our partners and clients happier. And so there are changes and improvements that you've got to be making in your business. And then if it doesn't make you money, you need to cut it. Look at your monthly budget personally and business-wise especially and find out where are some of the subscriptions you're paying for that you no longer need. Where are some of the things that you're investing or making payments on on a monthly basis that really you shouldn't be doing? Where can you save money? Where can you cut costs? Don't cut costs of things that make you money, but if there's something that you've been investing in that's not making you money, you need to cut it out. Some things like content and podcasts, although you, it may be 
more difficult to track that they're actually making you money? They probably are. Those are things you probably want to continue to do, pulling back on marketing, on lead generation, on content, on getting your company and brand out there. It's not the time to do that. In fact, it's the time to increase you know, investments and those types of things, but other stuff that you're investing in, it's time to start cutting that off if it's not making you money. And then you want to focus on opportunities that are recession-proof within your business. Again, recurring revenue, solutions to big problems that your customers and clients have, and investing in recession-proof businesses. What If you have money sitting around doing nothing, what business could you invest in that's going to be recession-proof, Right. Uh, as an example, you know, I'm making an investment right now into a business that's going to be helping people who are in pain. And whether, you know, the economy is good, bad, or, or indifferent, people are going to probably continue to want to get away from pain, especially physical pain. So making that investment in that business, I'm confident that's going to be recession-proof. If you're investing into apartments and, and homes, and, and rental type stuff, again, going to be pretty recession-proof. Regardless of what's going on in the economy, people need a place to live. That's going to continue to be recession-proof. So think of what recession-proof investments you can be making into your business with your investments that are going to do well no matter what is going on in the economy. 